In this video, we're going to implement a prime faces growl. A growl is similar to the messages that you see in many Apple products. It can also be similar to a toast in Android. So a confirmation of something that can either be sticky or that can go away. Uh, we kind of like the touchless go away. It allows us to do a whole lot of things on one screen and give instant feedback or near instant feedback to our users. So it looks something like this. You see a message pops up, and in this case they're sticky, so I need to remove them. Okay, implementing the growl on the JSF page is quite simple. We just need a little tag like this, and I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put it in our application. So we want it to be usually in the same form as the form that we're filling out, if this is... Uh, this is a growl that's going to be showed based on filling out a form. So I'm going to go to my enter plant details page. This is where I can add a new plant, something like this. I can add information for a plant. So I put the growl here, uh, p growl id equals growl, show detail is true and sticky is true. Let's change the sticky, well I'll tell you what, we'll eventually change it to false so it will go away automatically. Now one important thing that I frequently forget is on the command button that is submitting the form, we have to tell it, if you're going to send a message, where are you going to send a message? And for that, we add an attribute update, and then we put in the ID of the growl, which in this case is growl. Just as you see up here, growl. Okay, and save. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the add plant dot execute method that's the method that is invoked when we push this button so remember add plant lives in the ui layer the ui layer is going to call the business logic layer and in our application the business logic layer is going to call the persistence or dao layer so if you take a look at the execute method you're going to see this call to the business logic layer here now remember our theory on exceptions the rule with exceptions rule number one can I heal this exception if it occurs in my layer? In other words, if I'm in the persistence layer and I get a checked exception, I have to think about what I'm going to do in the catch block. Can I heal it? If I can heal it, let's heal it in the catch block. Let's fix the situation in the catch block. If that layer cannot heal it, then it should rethrow the exception until we get to a UI layer or a layer that can heal it. In the UI layer, we're going to ask a similar question. Can I heal this exception? If not, I should show a message. So that's the design pattern I've used in designing this class, which means that if something goes wrong in the save at any layer, the persistence or the business logic layer, we're going to find it in this catch block. But if nothing goes wrong, it's going to execute the lines that come between line 31 and the start of the catch block. In other words, if something, if an exception is thrown, the JVM will skip every line from the point at which the exception is thrown until the catch block that catches that exception. Which means if we add any logic in this area that I'm highlighting, if we add any logic between that line and the catch block, that will only execute if an exception was not thrown. In other words, this blue area is the success area. The only way we can get to the blue area is if line 31 executed successfully. The only way we can get to the catch block is if line 31 did not execute successfully. So you can kind of think of that as an if test. It's just not so easy to visualize because there's no curly around this success area. Nonetheless, this is the best place to put up some information about our uh, So the first thing we need is a faces context, which is going to give us access to this faces mechanism. So I'll say, uh, just one moment. I'll say get faces context. And then we're going to say faces context dot get current instance. We might need this for more than one message. So I'm going to go ahead and just invoke that much and then control one in Eclipse, which is the help me out here, what do you think I want to do? In this case, assigned to new local variable. Uh, we'll go ahead and call it, well, you know what, let's call it, no, that's fine, current instance is fine. So we'll say current instance, and then we're going to say dot add message. Okay, so add message, the first thing we need is a string. We're going to simply say null, 
the next thing we need is a faces message. As you see up here, this is an object of type faces message. So I need to make one. So between these two, we'll say what is the message that we want to show. And hopefully we pull this from some kind of internationalization friendly file so that we're not hard coding text. So I'm going to say uh, faces message fm equals new faces message. And then we're simply going to say faces message dot. We have to give it a severity level. In this case, it's good news because we're saying we're here because the save succeeded. So let's just say info. We don't need to do error or warn or anything like that. Then we'll say saved. And then we'll say plant saved like so and terminate with a semicolon. Now we can display the message. Okay, that second argument which we haven't defined, let's go ahead and make that faces message, and I'm going to save. Now I'm going to pause the recording as I rebuild redeploy, and we'll see how this looks when we run it. Now the page has been deployed. Note I'm going to hit submit, and we get our growl. Now you notice it's sticky. I'm going to close it. Okay, I'm going to go back to the page now, and I'm going to change it to sticky false, and we're going to try this again. It will take just a few moments, and you'll see in just a moment the saved, it floats away just like that. Now let's try one other iteration. We should probably use some validation to make this genus a required field. But let's go back to the business logic layer, and let's add a bit of validation here as well. I'm going to say if plant.getGenus, and then we'll say dot is empty. Okay, and just for sanity's sake, because I like doing this, we'll say if plant.getGenus um, equal equal null or plant.getGenus is empty. Let me fix this. Okay, then I'm going to throw an exception. Throw new exception genus required. A genus would be required. Uh, we'd usually need at least some kind of name for a plant. So in this case, in the business logic layer, I'm doing a bit of validation to say if the genus is null or the genus is empty, if there's nothing in there, throw back the exception, do not save the plant. Let's go back here to add plant and let's see how we can handle this. Control M so we can see it in high def. In this case, we want a similar faces message, but instead of severity info, maybe we want severity error. We also want to try and reuse this faces context. So let me bump this to a higher scope, take it out of the try block, and put it right before the try block so that we can use it both inside the try block and inside the catch block. Remember that a variable is alive from the point at which it is declared until the close curly of the block where it is declared. So if I left the faces context inside the try block, I wouldn't be able to use it in the catch block. But by promoting it and giving it a little bit better visibility, I'm able to use it in the catch block. And now at this point, I can tailor my message. Okay, control C. Now one thing is, well, one thing is we don't want to show the user too much information. Remember, there are two types of users we need to be aware of. Users who know too much and users who know too little. So we don't want to give a potential hacker any kind of uh, information that might help them to get into our site. So I'm simply going to change the faces message to uh, different severity. We'll say severity and we'll say error. And we'll say maybe unable to save. Okay plant not saved and then we would probably have something like you know the help desk has been notified we might log an error we'll take a look at logging in our next video allow me to save rebuild redeploy we'll take a look again now the application has been redeployed I typed in foo and genus I hit submit and notice that we get the normal information window now allow me to remove foo hit submit and we'll see unable to save plant not saved with a different icon 
So you see that the one growl tag can show different messages and even different icons based on our success. And it gives us that nice ability to get confirmation of the activity we've done without leaving the current page. In the old days of the web, you always had to type in a long form, hit a save or submit button, then it'd take you to another page. And uh, now this is more dynamic, more interactive, because we can see any kind of issues that we need to fix right when, when we're on this page. A very good user experience. So that's implementing a growl. In our next video, we're going to take a look at what else we can do with exceptions, specifically logging. I look forward to seeing you then.